Hello guys, welcome to CodesideAcademy.com. My name is Abdul Karim Okerim, and uh, I'll be your instructor for this course. So we'll continue where we stopped last time on our Chatbot REST API tutorial using Chatterbot. So uh, uh, last time I show you how to test how we integrate our REST API with, with Postman. So today we'll be integrating our uh, our Chatbot REST API with HTML. I already have this uh, template that we'll be making use of. So we'll be dealing with Bootstrap and uh, jQuery and uh, we'll be using uh, Ajax. So this is just a pure HTML. I'm going to open this in my live server. Okay, so here you go. So this is my, um, my HTML template that we'll be using to, uh, that will integrate with the chatbot. So first, uh, we'll code some ja uh, JavaScript code. Okay, so we need to code some JavaScript code that we we'll use to uh, update the chat. So take a look at the code once again. This is the former same uh, code base that we have. The only thing I had now is um, I had this HTML and assets and all. That's all. So this is our trainer, still there, and the server, the chatbot, they are all available for us. Okay, so let's get started. So today you will see one of the main reasons we are using Flask core, this uh, cross origin. Okay, so we'll see why we are using this. So first I need to create a function, a JavaScript function. So I'm going to call this uh, send to server. So this function, whenever we call it, is going to submit our chat to the to the server. So this HTML is a separate HTML content separately. We are not rendering this template. We are not rendering this template. Okay. So um, first I need to call Ajax. Ajax. Okay, so I called Ajax. Um, the next thing we need to specify the data we are sending back to the server. So, and if we take a look at uh, the server that we have here, which is um, here, when we take a look at what we have here, we are requesting for user input. Okay, so to do this, uh, we need to do the same thing. We need to make sure we send user input back to the system. Okay, so as I said, I have this uh, design. So I have this uh, um, this input, which is here, that allows us to get uh, input from user here. Whatever the user type, we need to get any information the user type here. If it is I, hello, and then we need to send that information back to the server so that the chatbot can give us the response. So we'll be displaying the chatbot uh, response here and whatever the user type will be displayed here. So that's why we have these two alert field. So first, let's get the value. So to get the value, I'll be using jQuery selector. So user underscore input, that's the ID name, you can see. And um, we get the value. All right, so once we have this uh, done, the next thing we need to send this to a server to do this we need to add our methods so the type of the methods we'll be using if you observe what we have in our rest api here we have a um, post so in rest api you can have different kind of methods we have puts post get uh, options and so on so i'm just dealing with post here 
So I'll specify the type of method that I'm using, which is post, and the URL. The URL that Ajax will submit these two. So um, it's on my local host. Let me get my the address. Okay, and um, we have this. So now, once Ajax posts this uh, at the user input, to get the user input first, convert it to a JSON, use the post method, and send this to this URL. The way, so we need to confirm if the request is done. So we can just say dot done here, call an anonymous function. we have our data then the next thing um, we can just uh, console.log here just to uh, to get to, to know the data that we get back from the from the server so I'll say data so uh, I'm very sure we are going to encounter some kind of error cross origin error as I said earlier that we are using flask core to make cross origin applicable but just for the back end not for the front end so here whenever we post the cross origin the browser will stop us from uh, from posting I'm going to show you how to bypass this but it's not 100% assurance but at the end we'll be able to bypass the cross origin error okay so um, let's test this out so I have the server running already so um, Let's connect this function to our button here. So on click, send to server, just copy and paste to avoid spelling error. So I call the uh, send to server function. So let me console.log to know if this is connected. So I will click. So once the button is clicked, we should be able to print out clicked on the console. So automatically live server should have reload this. So I'll say hi. Okay, so let me check the server. Okay, we have this error as the response. And let's check what we have here. Okay, we said we have cross origin internal server 5000 or 500 error. So here to do this, we need to make make sure we are actually posting. <coughs> we are actually posting JSON object, JSON data back to the server. So to do that, we need to specify some stuff here. The content type we are dealing with, and um, the content type. Your application application slash JSON. Then at the same time, we need to pass our header content. Which is access control. Allow. So we, we have to make this origin global. Okay, so this can contain specific origin, but here it's just global. So let's see if this is going to work. Well, I'm, I'm not sure if this is going to work or not. So now the server still running okay the server is still running uh, this should have been reload so let me send hi okay so we have 400 bad request so let's see okay now we can see this is sending two type of request now we have sending options and post Okay, let's cut it short. One of the main reasons this is happening here is because in the back end we are requesting for 
JSON. So in the in the REST API, we are requesting for JSON to avoid this kind of error. Mostly in your in your um, your REST API, you can request for form. Okay, so you don't have to specify all this data at all. You don't even have to worry about this data at all. The only thing you have to worry about is how you can secure your REST API by passing uh, maybe some uh, key and and how to verify to authenticate your REST API using JWT or Serializer or something. Okay, so the next thing now is let's check if the server has reload. Okay, so now let's test the chatbot. So I'm going to send hi to the chatbot again. Um, so let's wait uh, and let's see. Uh, hello. I think uh, the live server is restarting the project automatically. Let me start uh, the HTML content without live server. So I'm going to close this. So now this is the HTML content. Okay, this is just directly from the uh, from the route so let me send hi and let's see so let's check our console if we receive a data from here okay fine the rope the chatbot as response says hello so now we need to send this data here and your own data here so whatever I input here should be displayed here and the chatbot response should also be displayed here okay so we get this response from the chatbot that means that the REST API is working now. Okay. So now to do this, um, we need to uh, do some work with um, JavaScript using pure JavaScript. Okay, so um, let me remove this console.log. So I'm going to get the user input again. So whatever the user input, um, I'm going to use jQuery selector once again to get whatever the user input, which is at this. Okay, dot val. All right. So then, um, get. I'll get uh, this uh, div ID and display the text inside. So I'll use document dot get element by ID. So which is um, user input. And if you check our design, our template that we have in the front end here, you can see this is the user input field that I'm, I'm trying to append the data to, that I'm trying to put this value, value I'm working with in the request. So here I have get the value. So all I have to do now is to inner text equals to user, and I will do the same thing for key. Um, boot response. So the boot response, the response we get from the server. inner.html equals to uh, data so to get the data we are getting the response the actual response we are getting from from the server so we just have to look at it here you can see this will contain the data we are getting from from the 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 response we are getting back from the rest api so and uh, if you look at the server we have uh, a key and a value so the key 
holds the value, which is what is which is, which is MSG. MSG holds the value. Now holds the is the key for the value for the response we are getting from the chatbot. So data dot MSG. So now um if I should come here now, reload the server, send hi. Let's see. Now you can see my high display here and the chatbots. So let's see how are you doing? So, so let's see. Good. It says it's good. So let's just check the chatbot. You can see the response. We are sending post request. The status code is uh, 200. So, all right. So I was saying, let's see that is nice. Uh, I don't know. Okay, good. So we can see. The, the REST API and the UI that we have is separate UI on, a, on, a, on another file, another directory on our computer is working, talking to the REST API. So this is one of the application of REST API. REST API is like is a web service that allow you to render another service to another third party. For example, um, somebody need a chatbot on their website and, and I have a chatbot. So I can just give them my endpoint and the posts build a beautiful ui and get access to this so um if you enjoyed this tutorial and it's really helpful for you um please click, uh, click the subscribe button and comment down below if you have any question you want to ask so the next class we'll be talking about how we can integrate this uh, chatbot with a desktop application using pyq5 so stay tuned and see you in the next class uh, thank you